Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MSP. This is Ukraine War breaking news update for the 5th of March 2024. As many of you will know, I've already recorded this, but the uh, microphone didn't work for some unknown reason and I'm really frustrated. Anyway, very good news for the Ukrainians, uh, especially given the difficulties they are having on the front lines at the moment. They are being pushed by the Russians. Uh, they are suffering significant casualties. The Russians are too, of course, hugely. But where the Ukraine is having massive successes in the air, 13 airframes taken out in the last 14 days, something like that. And then in the Black Sea with the Russian Black Sea fleet that has been hammered over the last year or so. I think uh, some, somewhere between 20-25% of the Black Sea fleet has been sunk or taken out of service. And this is adding, this news is adding to that. So what's happened? The Russian patrol ship Sergei Kotov was destroyed in Crimea. The main di intelligence directorate officially confirmed the destruction of the ship. The agency uh, reports that as a result of the attack of Magura 5, so those kind of Sea Baby naval drones, USVs, unmanned surface drones. Uh, the Russian ship was damaged in the stern, the starboard, and the port side. So, again, being attacked from multiple directions. And it looks like it was attacked in the same place that it had been hit as well. They're using those tactics that we've seen on other sinkings as well. The cost of the sunken ship is about $65 million. And of course, that isn't is the. The value of the ship in monetary terms is not so important. That's why I keep stressing that we can put monetary value on that. And in, I guess, peace times or if they were to replace this ship, it would cost that, right? But uh, the Russians aren't going to go down to the bank, get out 65 million spondulis and go to the a shipyard and get one built right now. So the value of this ship is in the function it provides. And it appears that it had a surface to air missile system placed on the back of it where the helipad is on the helipad instead of having a helicopter and that has allowed the uh the russians to have a greater network around the crimean peninsula this was somewhere near Feodosia, somewhere near the kirch bridge potentially we've seen a ship that was taken out to the northwest of crimea that had uh, we think it was being used for for radar capabilities so every time one of these ships gets taken out it's about the functional value it provides. And there's a vicious cycle that is taking place in Crimea where each time an S-400 system or each time a ship is taken out like this, then the Russian capabilities are reduced. They are less able to take out particularly aerial targets. Uh, and that means that they are, the next time round, less able to take out aerial targets. And then the aerial, uh, the anti Aircraft warfare systems or the radar systems get taken out by those aerial targets and it gets better and better for the Ukrainians. And here we have possibly radar capabilities on board the ship, but also air defense too. As you can see, uh, an explosion in the distance there that's caught on camera. Just um, I can't play the sound because I get restricted, but basically there's a lot of machine gun fire, heavy machine gun sort of auto cannon, probably from the 762 from the uh, from the ship itself was having to go at those drones. But like I've said before, when you've got five drones surrounding you and you're a small, relatively small ship, you can't take out all those threats at once. And this is going to change uh, naval behavior going forward in the same way that aerial drones have m majorly changed the way we do warfare going forward. Now, the the Russians, I think even with or any nation with larger warships are going to be wondering, right, what do we do if even if we've got like a large frigate or battleship, maybe a flagship warship? And we have 12 of these drones attacking us all at once from different directions. Would we have the capabilities to to take them all out? Uh, and so we are in, I, I think, the midst of an arms race in a kind of abstract sense when where people are going to be going back to the drawing board and say, right, if we're fighting against particularly other nations that have the capabilities of making this number of larger drones, do we have, but then could the Houthis do something like that? Could they make these sort of drones? Do we have the ability to be able to protect a, a flagship from 12 of these attacking all at once? How do we do that? And there's going to be this kind of capability countermeasure a measure countermeasure sort of arms race going on at the moment right anyway russian sources this is from the 13th saying at night ukrainian sankar patrol ship sergey kotov hit with a bc uh, i won't i don't want to comment on this because if this continues the black sea fleet will only have catamarans and rubber bananas for vacation it's, it's effed up it is it is a, a bit of a bit of a poor show for the russians at the moment with regard to their navy so the sergey kotov was taken out uh, somewhere near fedosia by the looks of it uh, quote the ship is 
is dead. It's the fourth Corvette of the Project 22160. I don't know that's a fourth that's been sunk, according to Special Curse on Cat, uh, although a number of these have been sunk. It might well be the fourth one built. Sergei Kotov, hull number 383, was... Um, accepted into the service of the Black Sea Fleet on July the 30th, 2022. It's 1,965 tons, 91.3 metres long, 14.5 metres wide, a crew of 32 plus 8, although I have seen elsewhere, a crew of 80, so there are different claims about this. Armament is 176.2 millimetre, aka uh, 176, oh, I said there's 7.62 like you get on a tank, but anyway, whatever, the machine gun on board you know, wasn't able to cope with all of the drones at once anti-aircraft war um anti-aircraft missile system still one a short-range anti-aircraft missile system 3m47 and a ka 27 ps helicopter possibly on the back well actually that's not what was on the back as far as we understand um so the main director at the intelligence of ukraine has said that they've destroyed the enemy ship sergey kotov on the night of the uh, 4th of march uh 2024 4th to the 5th the mission took place in cooperation with the naval forces of the ukrainian armed forces and with the support of the ministry of digital transformation of ukraine i mean that's drones involved right um in the territorial waters of ukraine near the kerch strait um now, Russian sources saying regarding this attack, as can be seen from the footage shared in the media, our Black Sea sailors bravely fought with the enemy naval kamikaze drone, which attacked the patrol ship Sergei Kotov. So, first of all, I don't know how you can say they bravely fought. There's wild firing of machine guns. There, there is that. According to local reports, the ship was lost. According to our data, say the Russians, the entire crew survived. Evacuated, there were several wounded. I mean, they were firing off that ship when that explosion took, took place. Like, if the entire crew survived, I'd be incredibly surpri surprised. Um, but, of course, that's what the Russians tend to say. Uh, so, yeah, after a series of attacks took place on Russian ships in 2022, a Tor air defence system was installed on the ship's helipad, says Special Curse on Cat. So this is the idea that it has an air defence system on the back. And here we have the video of Magura 5 kamikaze drones. I, I won't enlarge this just in case, but basically you see from this footage that a number of the drones, one that's a massive explosion, uh, attack the ship from different sides. We That's, uh, I don't know, one of the one of the sides, starboard or port. And then we, I think next bit of footage, we see the stern getting um, targeted. Oh no, this is, this is, and I, th I wonder whether it's already been hit once just up up from that strike and it's trying to get close to that strike again we see a little bit later that, that there is a strike on an area that has definitely taken a hit from a drone um and it's uh and that's what we've seen on previous uh, attacks on russian ships so and it looks like is that listing already not sure um anyway uh yeah as you can see that that's where where it hits uh, where there's already sort of heat signature coming out of the side of the ship. So if some of the other drones seeing the fundamental uh, explosion, catastrophic explosion of the, of the ship. Uh, I wonder whether they bother sending in these further drones or whether they recall them, um, go and look for another target. I don't know, because I think that ship's pretty much had it. Um, nonetheless, yeah, it's it's a tough time to be a Russian ship in, in the Black Sea at the moment. Uh, I guess, and uh, yeah, there you can see um, damage to to the uh, to one of the sides, there, and then the hit on the stern, which is then caught on camera from this other um, other M5 Magura M5. So yeah, it is. Uh, uh, sorry, V5. Uh, that ship is, uh, I guess, pining for fjords again. Uh, damage caused by the detonation of one of the Magura V5 is visible in the camera on a subsequent naval drone that carried out the attack. As we saw, possible fate of the Sergei Kotov is it's um, no more. Uh, a short tourist walk along the deck of the Sergei Kotov in case you want to know what it looks like in uh, relative peacetime. This is, uh, this is the vessel. You can have a, have, a, have a look inside if you want. There it is. Anyway, uh, she's no more. Uh, that is uh, a bit, uh, just another massive dent in the 
I guess, the ego of the, of the Russians, that would be a bit of a PR loss. And that special case on Cat says, it's interesting that in the last three known cases of naval kamikaze drone attacks on the Russian fleet, in each case the drones tried to attack the same place on a ship's hull that had previously been damaged by the uh, drone detonation, which is possibly one of the tactics for naval drone strikes against ships, almost certainly. Yeah, it is uh, a good day for the Ukrainians, certainly. Um, Russian Zeb blogger thirteenth laments the the loss uh, as as we've seen you know f u c k as they say things are not looking good uh, there which is you know good news for the Ukrainians that as I've said they've been struggling somewhat uh, on the front lines but in the air and in on the Black Sea they are having an incredible success it's it's quite remarkable to see what has happened to the Russian naval fleet uh, and again it is a testament to the power of drones and how I think warfare is changing anyway uh, let me know what you think uh, please like subscribe and share uh, take care sorry this one was um, released in silence but you know good good for the lip readers out there uh, speak soon